Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on YouTube, the video watching platform for watching videos. And today in this video, I'm going to give you guys the rundown on how to get some very good indie drum sounds out of your drum kit. If you don't have a drum set, but you still want some really good indie drum sounds, feel free to check out my lo-fi indie drum pack. There's a bunch of one shots and loops that are perfect for indie music in there. I recorded that kit using all the same techniques I'm going to teach you guys in this video. So we're just going to jump straight into this thing with the first point, which is that you have to know exactly what you're going to play. So the process I'm going to show you in this video for getting indie drum sounds is really going to apply to indie pop, indie rock, indie folk, pretty much the majority of indie style genres out there, but there are always going to be kind of minor nuanced differences between genres, so that's why it's important to identify what exactly you're going to play beforehand. All right, so now we move on to the second point here, which is going to be the tuning of your drums. So for now, we're going to get rid of all this stuff. So right now we've got a clean drum set, just a nice blank canvas to work with, and we have to decide how we want to tune this bad boy. So in my opinion, the most important part of a drum set, and especially with indie music, is going to be the snare drum. When it comes to the tuning of your snare drum, the bottom head actually matters more than the top head. The reason this is a snare drum and not some other kind of drum is because it has snare wires. And those snare wires are only able to function because of the vibrations from the bottom head. So what I used to do for the longest time was I would just crank up both of the heads on the drum. And granted, if you do that and then just toss it t-shirt over the top of it, you're going to get a really nice indie snare sound. However, as I started drumming and recording drums more and messing around with different tunings, I realized that I actually like the sound of a lower tuned snare drum sometimes. And if you're going for more of an indie folk thing, you kind of want to detune your snare drum a little bit and lean more towards the lower tuning side because you'll get a fatter snare sound. That being said, if you're going for more of like a Mac DeMarco snare kind of thing, his snare is tuned really, really high. Like sometimes it almost sounds like a piccolo snare. Just try to mess around with it as much as you can and really figure out what sounds good to your ear. Really quick run down on how to tune your drums. You pick a tension rod to start with and then you loosen it or tighten it a certain amount. Whatever that amount is, let's say it's maybe a half turn or a full turn, whatever. Make sure you remember that because you're going to turn all the other tension rods that exact same amount. Once you do one, you go exactly across. Once you do that one, you pick the one next to it, go exactly across again. Do this one, go next to it, exactly across. And then just do that and repeat it for as many times as you need. Another very underrated thing about your snare sound is your snare wire tension. The snare throw off right here is how you raise or lower the snare wire. So if you go like that, snare wires are just hanging. But with this little knob on top, you can make kind of fine adjustments to the snare wires. So if I tighten it, it'll tighten the tension on the snare wires. If I loosen it, it'll bring those snare wires down a little bit. When the wires are tighter, you get kind of a snappier, more thin snare sound. And when they're looser, you get a fatter, kind of chunkier snare sound, which is really good for indie folk kind of stuff. Honestly, a pretty good fail safe for just a good generic indie snare sound is just to crank up the heads and just have a nice tight, punchy snare sound. So when it comes to tuning your toms, there's different ways to tune toms and there's a lot of personal preference involved as well. Just like any of this stuff really. So I actually have the bottom heads off of my toms, which gives them a little bit bigger sound. You can leave them on if you like to. A lot of people do. I know Mac DeMarco has the bottom heads in his toms, but for me, it's just easier to worry about one head. So I have my toms tuned extremely low. And the reason for that is because I always have them muffled. So the muffling is going to take away a lot of the resonating and the vibration from the toms. Because muffling the drums does kind of drastically change the sound of them, the best tip that I can give is to make sure that the fundamental pitch that you're getting out of the toms sounds right with the rest of the kit. Because we did the snare first, you can kind of adjust the toms to whatever your snare drum tuning is. For example, if you have a really highly tuned, very snappy snare drum, your toms might not be tuned super low. You might want to crank them up a little bit. And when it comes to tuning your kick drum, it doesn't really matter because we're just gonna muffle it a lot. Just make sure the batter side head is not too loose or too tight. All right, so now the final part before we get into the more recording focused side of things is going to be the drum muffling, which is kind of the most important thing here. And some people out there think it's just as easy as just throwing a t-shirt on your drum and then calling it a day. And they're kind of right, but however, there is a lot more nuance to it. So once again, let's start at the snare drum. So first things first, what is the point of muffling? Why do we do this anyways? The goal is to basically get rid of a lot of the overtones and reduce a lot of the ringing and resonance resonance of the drum. If I play the snare drum just like this, you can hear it just rings out and resonates for a while, and some people may like that sound, but it's just not really good for indie music, and I'm personally not a huge fan of it. With the muffling, you can go small, using those little moon gel type things, or your wallet, or something like that. Just as simple as putting some sort of object on the snare. Or you can go with the nuclear option of just throwing a t-shirt on there. And honestly, this is my preferred method. It just gives you the deadest snare sound you possibly can get. 
and I personally love it, but the thing you have to take into account is that if you want more attack in your snare sound, you want more of that sound of the stick hitting the head of the drum, what you can do is fold this back so that it only covers a part of the snare drum so that you'll still pick up the sound of this stick hitting the drum head. So play around and figure out what muffling you like best, whether it's a thick shirt like this, maybe a thinner material like a bandana, maybe like it fully muted or half muted or just a little bit muted. All right, so we got the snare drum taken care of. Now we can move on to the toms once again. One thing that I do with my toms is I have a little piece of gaff tape on the heads of the drums. The tape on the toms is kind of like my first line of defense of muffling. And the second line of defense is of course gonna be some sort of cloth. Now I've found that with toms, using a thinner material like a bandana is going to be a lot better. If you use something really thick like a t-shirt for example, it really takes away too much of the overtones and too much of the resonating of the drum to where you kind of just get a dull thud when you hit the drum. If that's what you're going for, feel free to do that, but I feel like you want at least a little bit of resonating out of your toms. So I'll take my bandanas and I'll do this little life hack where you take the corner of the bandana and stick it underneath the mic clip, and then you clip this back onto the drum, and now these will actually stay in place while you're playing instead of sliding off all the time, which is the most annoying thing ever. All right, kick drum muting. This paper towel is essential. Since the very start of my drumming career, I have always just tossed a pillow or a large blanket or something inside of the kick drum. Therefore, that is what I'm also gonna recommend to you. The process is very simple. You're going to grab a blanket or pillow of some kind and then proceed to... There's really two important factors here. The first one is the mass of the muting that you put in. So if you just put in a ton of stuff, if you put in a really heavy blanket, really heavy pillow, your kick is gonna be a lot more muted than if you just put in like a sock. I honestly just take this sleeping bag and I fold it up a couple times and there you have it. But the second factor is going to be how much this muting is pressing up against the batter side head. So if you have this smushed against that head, obviously it's not going to resonate very much because you're stopping it from moving at all. So if you want a little bit more body and a little bit more beef to your kick sound, pull that muting a little bit out from the head. So muting our cymbals is an option that we have here as well. The first and main thing that most people do is using gaff tape once again. This ride that I have is gigantic, but I'll show you anyways. You can see that the only muting that I use on this is just one single piece of tape kind of close to the bell of the cymbal. The way cymbals are made is that they're thicker closer to the bell and thinner as they go outwards. So a lot of the vibrations and the tone of a cymbal is going to come from the part of the metal that's closer to the outside to the edge of the cymbal. The closer you put the tape to the outside of the cymbal, the more it's going to muffle it. This is also super dusty. Part of the reason I don't have a whole lot of muting on this is because it's already a very dark sounding cymbal, it's Zildjian K, but if you do have very bright sounding cymbals, you might want to consider doing some muting on them. These hi-hats on the other hand, Totally different story. These are Zildjian A Customs. A Customs are notoriously very bright, very sharp sounding hi-hats. I try to find ways to muffle these quite a lot. The first thing I do is I have these little squares of t-shirt that I've cut a little hole in, and I just put these over the top of the little hi-hat clutch, and that's gonna make a big difference just as it is. When I tell you these are bright hi-hats, they're very bright, like this amount of brightness. This is how bright they are. So I'll also usually take a bandana and just kind of drape it over there, and this will usually do the trick for me. You can also put tape on your hi-hats as well. Why am I so dusty? So that pretty much covers everything you're gonna to need to know to set up your drums in order to get a really good indie sound. But if you wanna actually record these drums, the first thing you need to keep in mind is how you're gonna play. For example, if we're going for kind of a men I trust type drum sound, their drums are always played incredibly light. So you're definitely not gonna be going because you can play the exact same drum pattern from one of their songs, but if you play it just like that, it's not gonna sound like them. So you gotta play light. And on the other side of the spectrum, if you're going for a really hard indie rock kind of thing, you're going to play a lot harder naturally. All right, so now we're going to talk about actually recording these drums. And the first part of that we have to address is going to be microphones. So I personally am at a stage right now where I am recording with a lot of different microphones. But when I first started, I just used two microphones and that got the job done just fine for me. Now, if you just have one microphone, I'm going to be honest, you're probably not going to get the best sound. But I would recommend just maybe doing a thing where you put the microphone kind of like here so it can get all aspects of the drum kit. You try kind of an overhead thing. You could try a room mic. Mess around with different techniques and kind of figure out what would sound best for you. If you have two mics, I'd recommend one on the kick and one on the top snare. That's really the most important. Three mics, I would say do a snare top and bottom and then kick mic. Four, I would say add an overhead and then so on and so forth. If you have the inputs for it and you're going to be playing the toms a lot, definitely mic up the toms. But the main factor with this is that you want to close mic the drums. You don't really want to even have a room mic. You can have a room mic, of course, but I find that a room mic or even sometimes an overhead mic can really take away a lot of that dead, muted, indie type sound. So the recording I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to use a snare top, bottom, kick mic, 
two tom mics, and then an overhead mic. And this overhead mic is gonna be positioned just directly over the snare drum. So let's record. So now once you have your drums recorded, the final step of the process is going to be mixing. Now I have a microphone. I use FL Studio, but all the stuff I'm gonna show you is gonna to apply to whatever DAW you choose to mix in as well. So the first thing I'm always gonna do is go to the bottom snare mic and reverse the polarity on that bad boy. The reason we do that is because the snare top and snare bottom are recording the same thing from different angles, so they're gonna have opposite phase. After that, I like to have snare top and bottom routed to one snare bus, and obviously you can adjust the level of the snare top and snare bottom according to how much you wanna hear of each one. And the first thing I throw on there is this Sheps 73 Mono plugin. You click on the presets thing and then go to snare and then just make some adjustments as you like. So after that, I'll put on CLA 76 and I pretty much just put on a snare preset on there. And finally with the snare, just some EQ that looks like this. And now with our kick drum, it's a similar procedure. We're gonna go back to that Shep 73 plugin. This is just a really great overall preamp plugin. All the plugins I use here are gonna be linked in the description below if you wanna go check them out, by the way. So you can go ahead and click on this kick preset or any other one that you see fit. And then I have an EQ on here just to kind of cut out a lot of the really high end and a lot of the basically inaudible low frequencies. And you might be thinking, oh, well, don't you wanna cut out a bunch of the high end? When I started recording drums, I used to think that. I was like, bass drum? That means all you need is bass frequencies, right? But when you keep a lot of this high end, it maybe even actually boosts some of it a little bit, it'll actually make your kick punch a lot harder and just sound better overall. And the final thing I put on here is one of my favorite plugins for drums, DBX 160. I just click on the bass drum preset and then adjust the settings a little bit. If you're using tom mics, the process is very simple. You just put a little EQ on each one of them. With the floor tom, you can cut out more of the high end than you should with the rack tom right here. And then I also put DBX 160 on each of these and I have this herd of toms preset just with the gain boosted quite a bit and that'll make your toms sound really, really good. And this is optional, but I think it sounds great is panning your toms. You can pan one to the left and one to the right like this. Which toms you pan to which direction is kind of a stylistic choice. And now the last microphone to tackle is the overhead mic, which sounds like this, just raw. And like I said, if you have just one microphone, it's not gonna sound perfect, of course, but that is very usable as just a drum sound in general. But the way that I like to use this is just to bring out some of the high end in the cymbals and kind of glue the whole drum kit together as kind of just a big drum kit microphone. But I really don't do much to it. I'll just go and add the DBX 160, go to presets, and then I'll just do overheads. And honestly, that preset is pretty much just good as it is. But then I'll also probably take an EQ and we're gonna boost some of this high end. Now here's a little personal preference, kind of stylistic thing I like to do sometimes. I'll take this Trueverb plugin and specifically mono to stereo because we're using a mono microphone. Sometimes I'll go with just the default preset and mess with it a little bit, or you can go with this drum room preset. Trueverb is definitely one of my favorite reverb plugins. It's just such a very realistic reverb, but just adding a little reverb on your overhead or your room mic even, just adds so much depth to the drum recording in general. And finally, for all the master effects and everything, I love using Kramer tape. I have a little preset made already, but it's basically just up the playback level, bring down the record level. If you wanna go lo-fi mode with this, you can hit 7.5 speed. And if you wanna go hardcore lo-fi mode, one of my favorite plugins for that is Real Light Pro. I've tried messing around with the different drum presets and everything, but I don't really like how many of them sound. But I found what I do like the sound of is just going to the mix bus and then clean master, either one or two, doesn't really matter. And just this right here sounds great. But trust me, we can lo-fi this even more. Definitely either D or F is gonna be the most lo-fi out of all of them. But if you change this tape speed thing to slow, it's gonna make every single one sound super lo-fi. So yeah, there you have it. Here is our pretty much perfectly beautiful indie drum sound. So ladies and gents, that is pretty much gonna do it for me in this video here today. Hopefully you're able to gain some knowledge and some value, some wisdom from this video. Like I said, if you're in the market for some indie drums, but you don't wanna do all this nonsense, all this hullabaloo, definitely go ahead and check out my lo-fi indie drum pack. It's easily the best drum kit I've ever made. I'm really proud of it, and I know you guys will like it as well. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a beautiful day, and I will see you all next time.